What's going on guys? Welcome back to the shop. This is your friend Dick and we don't do a lot of how to's and that's not necessarily what we're doing today. What we're doing is fixing the Tahoe. This is Katie's mom mobile and it needs to be tippy top. Now it's been ticking off and on the typical LS tick, right? Well, I looked up a lot of videos to kind of see if this was something I wanted to make and I noticed that there's a lot of videos that had different ticks in my opinion and uh, it was kind of addressed as being one thing. This is an intermittent tick. You could just see the video where I light it up and it sounds fine. Yesterday, lit it up, cold, terrible. You could hear that the lifter was definitely not pumped up. What's happening in my opinion on this one, I've yet to see for sure and I don't want to usually get ahead of myself but I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess here. The O-ring in the pickup tube will get pinched or will get dry or something will happen to basically where it's not sealing completely. You don't have a perfect seal and you're gonna get some kind of air pocket that gets into the lifter and then the lifter starts to clatter. So that's what I would consider the typical LS uh, tick. Some people run with it for a really long time. This thing might have had it off and on. Um, intermittent is a common symptom of what I would consider the typical tick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the hood, we're gonna start getting into it, drain the oil. This also has some valve cover leaks, so um, I forgot to get valve cover gaskets, but <laughs> just realized that now, but we'll need to go ahead and swap those out, so maybe I'll have to run up in my, my car and snag them, or actually I might even have to leave that for another day. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and get the oil drained out, see about getting this oil pan popped off and swapping out the pickup tube O-ring. Alright, so I haven't done one of these before, so uh, <laughs> it's my assumption that this cross member will come out uh, and is not completely structural. That we can get up into this oil pan pulling fiasco. Now, I'm seeing a lot of leaks from other stuff. I am going to do like a general look around because one of the main things we're doing here is my wife and I are going to take this thing up to the mountains here in about a week or so. So, I'll be looking around at things like is the rear main leaking, etc. etc. It does look like maybe do a little bit of cleanup too. Just be like extra fancy and stuff. But first and foremost, pull the drain plug, get this pan off. I'm also gonna do is start soaking these bolts uh, just to get a head start there. Maybe make life a little bit easier. Just a little bit. We don't want it too easy. Just missed it a little bit, of course. Train plug looks good. Yay. So these two bolts need to come out. Set those to the side. One cool thing about a 60E, and I'm talking like one cool thing about a 60E, is you can pull this little inspection cover and you can look up inside, see if you do have a rear main leak. Um, you can see some evidence that this rear main is most likely leaking, unfortunately, as well as some oil on the inside of the inspection cover so that will be at a later date now i'm going to go ahead and see if i can break the bolts loose on this cross member See there, cross member is out. Nice. Oil pan's pretty nasty. Definitely been leaking some stuff for quite a while. There's a couple things we're gonna get pulled off. Uh, the oil level sensor, and then this harness that's routed, and I think it's bolted to it in three places. Um, so we'll get that knocked off, and then we'll start pulling the uh, oil pan bolts. Not too bad. It's almost like they designed it this way. <laughs> so this guy here on the harness, has one bolt on the driver's side, and then on this side it actually 
slides in so you push it towards the driver's side and slide it out that's out there's a bolt up here we got the oil pressure level sensor uh connector off now we're gonna blip all the bolts out and uh spill oil everywhere hopefully it shouldn't be it, it probably won't be too bad i'm just being uh silly sally All right, pans out. As you see, uh, what do we have here? For you hot rodder guys, we do have Gen 4 rods, which is muy bueno. This is a 4.8, which is pretty cool. Um, so we got two 13 millimeter windage tray bolts holding on the pickup tube, and then one whoop, little baby 10 mil. And we'll have this pickup tube out. Uh, let me use both my hands. <laughs> My, I'm down my tripod, unfortunately. We'll pop this out real quick and see how that O-ring looks. So here's my take of what we have going on. We got the pickup tube out. Like I said, you got your two 13 mil nuts and then the uh, one little uh, 10 mil head guy. So this pickup tube O-ring is, I would consider bad. Uh, you can see that it's actually squished and dry and get that thing put back in there properly hopefully i don't pinch it um, i always put a little bit of oil on that o-ring that way hopefully i don't pinch it you want to make sure it's orientated right all those good things that uh we try to do so we don't have to do things twice sometimes we do things twice <laughs> one thing you want to be cognizant of is um there are different pickup inlet tube o-rings uh, you can see here that there is the black green and red i believe there's even more um, i think like the holly pants come with a black one but it's not this black like it's black but it's not this size so be very aware of what application you're working on and what you're doing uh, we're gonna need this red one and we're gonna probably get all this grossness off of it but yeah red it is So now's the time where I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the oil pan. I'm gonna clean up the pickup tube. I'm gonna get the filter swapped on the oil pan and get everything ready to go back in. Uh, yeah, do whatever you want at this point, but hey, why as well clean it up while we're here. We got the pan all cleaned up, looking good. We got a new oil pan gasket. Uh, you wanna make sure that this oil, like the, Caskets on LS motors are pretty reusable and I've gotten really liberal with that But since it's my wife's car and I don't want to work on it all the time You want to make sure you see how that has that nice bump and it's protruding from the Ledge itself or whatever you want to call it the mounting surface that press in is what's going to give you a really nice seal uh, You can tell that the one that came off of the pan was nice and flat so went ahead and replaced it. I had one on the shelf there are rivet points on the pan. If you've never done this before, there's a rivet there, this little hole. And there's another one there. You'll find it when you're taking the oil pan gasket off. You could re-rivet it if you want to. I usually don't. Uh, the other thing that you're gonna wanna do is the points where you see the like perforations in the gasket, you're gonna wanna put some, whoop, some sealant. I choose this stuff. People have their opinions about it, but the right stuff by Permatex Black, one minute gasket, stuff is awesome. I'm gonna put that on the block side once I clean it up. Now let's go see in there, I did get the pickup tube on. The pickup tube is all cleaned up uh, and installed. Now I do this, I don't know if it's actually like supposed to be done this way, but that bolt, I put a little dab of uh, uh, Loctite on it just cause, and then I'll Loctite these as well. Just, I don't know just because I want to. <laughs> I don't know, everybody has certain opinions and there might be what you're supposed to do in the book, but that's what I do. Um, I don't force this pickup tube in. I didn't get to video myself, but uh, yeah, don't force it in. Just kind of rotate it back and forth. You can use whatever kind of lubricant you want. I chose to use um, actually new oil and you can see that it is sealed all the way to the oil pump and that's what you're looking for. You wanna make sure it's sealed all the way to the oil pump and you don't have to force it in any way. Um, so yeah, we're on with the pickup tube. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the bottom of the oil, uh, 
pan rail mounting surface. And we'll go ahead and get the oil pan back up on there. And what I was talking about with sealant is what I'm gonna do, oops, sorry. I'm just gonna take RTV and do like a nice dab there. All four corners, right by the front and rear covers. So, yep, you can kind of see it there. And then again, right up here. So that's what I do. Um, and I usually don't have any issues with leaks. So that's what we want, right? You can see here the valve covers are leaking like I was saying so I really wish I'd had valve cover gaskets come to my brain when I was at the store but we are about out of time today for me to be in the shop so I will maybe get those tomorrow. Now it's time to put oil in the machine and I don't use SuperTech oil from Walmart. It's really cheap. Nice. So at this point here, where you hope you hear no oil hitting the ground, because that'd mean that you're having a bad time. Now they, the whole five quart thing is a scam, because these need six. So don't buy a single quart. Don't get caught up in that. You want to buy a whole another five quarter. the money. The other thing we're going to do while we're here is swap out this air filter because I don't think I've ever even looked at it since I bought this thing for Katie. Wix 42487. Not like you can't Google it, but you never know. We have oil, we have a new air filter. The oil pan drain plug is in, all the bolts are tight on the oil pan. The cross member is back in, bolted up tight, torqued. Uh, everything's ready to go. So let's go ahead, hit the key, get some oil pressure. And if I hear anything clack, I'm gonna throw something. Oil pressure. Quiet, quiet, quiet. <laughs> I just blind you, sorry. Nothing gushing on the floor, so that's good. Am I like screaming in your ear? Sorry if I am, I don't regret anything. Yes, sir. It actually is, in all seriousness, quite a bit uh, quieter in the valve train. I think you can probably even tell even from the initial video I gave you guys that wasn't like a, the greatest starting video of it ticking. It was not really ticking, but you could hear a little bit more noise in the valve chain. Sounds good. I'm happy. Yeah, we has oil pressure. That's good. We're doing it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Hopefully this helped you out if you're having an issue. Only a couple things I'm going to mention really quick before I let you go is if you need torque specs, ls1howto.com is the place to go. I'll put the link in the description below. If I forget, let me know in the comments and I'll put it in there. Um, and then also make sure you torque that oil pan correctly, middle out to get the correct seal and make sure that you're not messing anything up. Um, if you're new and you like it and you want to check out some other videos, go ahead and hit subscribe or even if before you do that, go to the channel and check it out. Make sure you dig it. Uh, we have a pretty cool community of people here and I like doing hot rod things and having a blast. If you're new or old, hit this, uh, the like button for me if you can. And uh, that's going to do it for me today. I'm out. Peace. Time for dinner and a beer.